prophecies are very good at getting the characters into trouble. But for the reader, the prophecies in A Song of Ice and Fire seem to be a kind of interactive foreshadowing. They're mysteries that were meant not only to engage with, but to actually solve. Just like a game or a riddle. And like any good game, it wouldn't be fair if it weren't possible to win. So, throughout the story, the author buries clues, traps, twists, and revelations, just waiting to be found. One of those traps is the limited point of view structure of the narrative that serves to implicitly deny that the game even exists. There's nothing more to see here, because the character doesn't see it. Move along. So, in order to play this game, we can't sit around waiting for an invitation. We have to invite ourselves and take a leap of faith that there is, in fact, a game going on. One that demands thorough assimilation into the story's premises and style. This is Melisandre's Girl in Grey prophecy from A Dance with Dragons. You'll need to have read the books in order for all of this to make sense, because I'm going to be diving deep into minor details. If you like that sort of thing, then this will be fun. This is a spoiler warning for the main books of A Song of Ice and Fire, including the Winds of Winter sample chapters. It all starts at Castle Black. Jon Snow has just received news that Ramsay Bolton has Arya, and he's going to marry her. Jon's pretty bummed about it. He knows what Arya's like, that she's going to fight back and just make it worse. The thing is that Jon doesn't know that it isn't really Arya. It's Sansa's friend, Jane Poole, who's being passed off as Arya, so that Ramsay can marry her and claim the North through the Stark name. John is stressed out, so he goes outside for a walk, and his direwolf ghost comes along too. Melisandre shows up and they start talking. Mel is trying to seduce John really hard throughout this whole conversation. She's using really suggestive language, stroking his ego, petting his direwolf, and Ghost is completely enchanted with Melisandre. Melisandre can tell that John is worried about his sister Arya. But Mel is a prophet, and she reassures John that Arya is going to be fine. And she's actually on the way here. And this is the first time we see the prophecy. I have seen your sister in my fires, fleeing from this marriage they have made for her, coming here to you, a girl in grey on a dying horse. I have seen it plain as day. It has not happened yet, but it will. Now, John is one of those characters who just doesn't give a damn about prophecies. He's cool like that. But we can see that this kind of affects him. He's thinking about Melisandre's words. A girl in grey on a dying horse, he thought. Coming here to you, Arya. Because John and Arya were really close. Arya has been missing for years. So this prediction is quite a surprise for John. And it seems like he wants to believe it. Melisandre straight up offers sex. John is tempted, but he refuses. She gets a little annoyed that her seduction isn't working, and the chapter ends like this. The mist rose from her pale flesh, and for a moment it seemed as if pale, sorcerous flames were playing about her fingers. Take my hand, and let me save your sister. She's offering to make a shadow demon thing with John, like she did with Stannis. So we have the original first telling of the prophecy. Here it is again. This is very important. The author is going to try every trick in the book to misdirect us from these exact words. Characters are going to communicate the prophecy back and forth, dropping words, adding words that weren't there, and making bad assumptions that seem entirely reasonable. Our job is to resist those misdirections and protect the prophecy in its original form. The next time we hear about the vision is in Melisandre 1. 
This is the first and only time we get to see inside her head and how she thinks. She's in her private quarters by the fire praying for visions of Stannis. We get to see that she's very careful about interpreting her visions. Many a priest and priestess before her had been brought down by false visions, by seeing what they wished to see instead of what the Lord of Light had sent. Hmm, so maybe that's what she was doing. I'll give her credit, she tries to be a good witch. She sees a whole bunch of weird visions that I'm going to skip because we're here for the girl. The girl. I must find the girl again. The grey girl on the dying horse. Jon Snow would expect that of her, and soon. It would not be enough to say the girl was fleeing. He would want more. He would want the when and where, and she did not have that for him. She had seen the girl only once. A girl as grey as ash. And even as I watched, she crumbled and blew away. It seems like she doesn't actually know that the girl is Arya, because she calls her the girl instead of Arya. And her bias is showing really clearly, because she just wants to give Jon good news. We got some new information here. She said she has seen the girl only once, and she's remembering that original vision she had. So this is good. We can use this. I'm going to put it with the original and start building a list of search criteria. The girl we're looking for needs to be... A girl in gray, gray as ash, on a dying horse, fleeing from this marriage they have made for her. So there has to be a they, and they have to have made the marriage for her. Coming here to you. Melisandre is at Castle Black talking to Jon Snow. So this can only mean Castle Black and Jon Snow. Plain as day is a cool description but it doesn't describe the girl, so I'm going to leave it out. Every word in prophecy has a purpose, but I'm not sure what the purpose of this would be. We'll keep it in mind, though. Even as I watched, she crumbled and blew away. Yep, get in there. We have the beginnings of our search list, but as we continue reading, more of the vision is revealed. The girl, she said. A girl in gray on a dying horse. Jon Snow's sister. Who else could it be? She was racing to him for protection. That much Melisandre had seen clearly. So whoever this girl is, she's racing to John for protection. Now, there's one more passage that gives us some information about the vision. Melisandre is talking to Mance Raider. Mance is trying to coax out more information about the vision, which he does successfully, but, well, you'll see what I mean. Did your fire show you where to find this girl? I saw water, deep and blue and still, with a thin coat of ice just forming on it. It seemed to go on and on forever. Long Lake, what else did you see around this girl? Hills? Fields? Trees? A deer once? Stones? She is staying well away from villages. When she can, she rides along the bed of little streams to throw hunters off her trail. He frowned. That will make it difficult. She was coming north, you said. Was the lake to her east or to her west? Melisandre closed her eyes, remembering. West. She is not coming up the King's Road, then. Clever girl. The descriptions of the water are good, so I'm going to add them to the list. But Mance Raider jumps to a conclusion. He says the water is Long Lake, because he knows the area well, and Long Lake is the biggest lake in the north. But we are trying not to jump to any conclusions about the vision. Water can be deep and blue and still anywhere in the world, so I should leave Long Lake off the list. The hills and deer and streams and all that stuff, those are safe to use because they come from Melisandre. Now, Mance says that Melisandre says the girl is coming north, but Mel never said north. What Mel originally said was coming here to you, so I'm going to leave north off the list. West can go in. It seems like a straightforward question with a straightforward answer. She's closing her eyes and remembering that first vision she had. She's avoiding the King's Road? No. Mance Raider is just making a bad assumption. Melisandre didn't say anything about the King's Road. So there it is. That was a treacherous conversation to navigate. But I think we dodged all the traps. And extracted everything we can safely use. 
Our meticulously constructed list describes everything we're looking for in our search for the girl in gray. Give it a look, and if you're not sure where something came from, rewatch this part. I need you on board. Alright, let's find this girl. <laughs>